Hi, I'm, my name is Andrew Lee, also known as user of Fuzzheado on Wikipedia. I want to welcome you to our first episode of a special series that we're doing here on the Wikipedia Weekly Network. So as many of you know, this should have been the week that the Wikimania, the annual conference of Wikipedia and Wikimedia uh, contributors starts in Bangkok. And because of COVID-19, we've had to postpone that conference for the very first time. So we still wanted something to mark this occasion. And one of the things that came to mind was we've never really done a oral history of Wikimania. And there's so many stories to tell of this conference that started in 2005. And to have a series that talks about the impact of these face-to-face -face meetings of Wikipedia editors and Wikimedia contributors was long overdue. So I'd like to bring in my co-hosts on this show, folks who are dedicated wiki maniacs and Wikipedia editors. First, I want to come in and bring Phoebe in. Hi, Phoebe. Tell us who you are and where you're from. Hi, um, I am Phoebe Ayers, a user Phoebe on the wikis. Um, I am currently in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I have done many things in Wikimedia land. I have worked on the Wikimania conferences and been the program chair for a couple of them and worked on several others. But I've also been an editor on the English Wikipedia for uh, the last 15 years or so. And I served on the board of trustees um, of the Wikimedia Foundation as well. That's great. And uh, we also have Richard Nipel. Hi, Richard. Hi. Tell us Hi. where you are and uh, where you're from. I'm uh, I'm from I'm from and I'm at in Brooklyn, uh, New York, USA, and I'm a user Ferros on the wikis. And uh, I didn't come to my first Wikimania until uh, 2010, uh, so I'm glad to help uh, catch up and and learn from uh, our predecessors. That's great. And for folks who are watching us, there are little logistics that you should know about. We're using a program called Streamyard, which actually broadcasts this video to multiple platforms at the same time. So some of you may be watching us on YouTube and uh, your comments that you type into YouTube, we can actually see here and we can bring some of the comments up on the screen. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, we also have a Facebook group called Wikipedia Weekly. Um, if you'd like to add comments to that thread, we can actually see your comments and bring those questions and observations up here. So hopefully a lot of you are watching either have experience with Wikipedia or some of you might've actually been at these Wikimania conferences and wanna add some comments. So if you're on, Facebook, if you want your face and your name to show up on the comments, you need to go to streamyard.com slash Facebook. So that is something that is uh, necessary for you to show your uh, face on the screen. And I think we can show you an example of that in a second. Um, and that is allows us to kind of bring up the conversation and to have that with folks in social media without having to bring your video on. We also are on Twitter and Periscope. So if you are looking at the Wikipedia Weekly handle on Twitter, you can find this video live on Periscope as well and tweets back to that account we can see as well. So StreamYard is really powerful in that regard. So again, the main thing is if you're on Facebook and you wanna have your name and face show up when we put your comment on the screen, go to streamyard.com slash Facebook to authorize the app to do that. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to introduce some other folks who are uh, joining us today. We have a chock full of panelists here. We're going to maximize the StreamYard uh, screen here. We're going to look like the Brady Bunch or Hollywood Squares by the end of the day. So uh, let's next have James Forrester. Hi, James. Hi there. I'm Tell James. us uh, where you're from and your uh, role in the movement. Sure. So I was, uh, I'm from London, from the UK. And I joined Wikipedia as a community editor in about 2002, three-ish. And um, nowadays, I actually work for the foundation, the Wikimedia Foundation as well, um, mostly in San Francisco, but I'm in London because COVID has made a fun time for all of us. Anyway, but I'm really glad to be here and talking about Wikimania. That's great. And James is uh, one of the folks who helped form that first Wikimania and has also been to every Wikimania uh, that's been in existence. That's great to hear. Uh, let's next bring up Ward Cunningham. Hi, Ward. Oh, you're muted. Let's unmute you. All right. There we go. 
I'm Ward. I'm here in Portland, Oregon, and uh, I've been a longtime follower of Wikipedia long before it even existed. <laughs> I made the, I made the first wiki in uh, 1995, and uh, uh, was proud to set a good example and and have uh, the encyclopedia folks, which is what I always refer to them as, uh, uh, follow the lead and uh, improve on everything I did. Great. Thanks, Ward. And for those who are watching, you, we are in the presence of Internet History with Ward. He's the creator oh. of the wiki system that gave Wikipedia its name. So we are very much honored to have Ward here. And we'll see in the video later on that he was one of the keynote speakers at the first Wikimania. Um, but we actually should talk to also, I think, employee number one of the Wikimedia <laughs> Foundation and Movement, right? Is that right, Brian? Tell us. Who you are. That is right, are. Andrew. <laughs> uh, so I got involved in the software that ran uh, Wikipedia back in the very early days in uh, late 2001, before we had what we know today as MediaWiki. Uh, and I added Unicode support to better support uh, all of the multiple languages we were using. And then we switched to new software. So I had to add Unicode support again. And then we switched <laughs> to a new version of that software. So I had to add Unicode support a third time, but that stayed. <laughs> So, so I've been no to, uh, I believe, every Wikimania except two. I missed Gdansk and Stockholm. But uh, I'm kind of sad that I don't get to be in the 100% club anymore. But I am glad that I get to reminisce with all you old farts. So uh, it's good to see everybody. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we, we're not holding it against anyone who didn't make it to all of them. So don't worry. Uh, we also have... Florence, tell us who, where you are. And Florence was one of the first board members of the foundation, right, Florence? Yeah. So hello, everyone. Yes, Florence Devoir. My username is Anter. You can follow me on Twitter if you want. Um, <laughs> I joined Wikipedia at the end of 201. And that was, of course, my first Wikimania ever. I had joined the board of trustees uh, just a few months before. So I was part of the team that tried to set up this first big event, but I was not within the organizer. We can talk about that later. Um, other than that, uh, I'm slightly better than Brian, but less than you because I'm no more in the 100 attendance club. <laughs> I missed <laughs> Hong Kong, so I'm very sad as well. That, uh, we are all together missing Bangkok this year. Mm -hmm. But hopefully next year will be the good one, the right one. So otherwise, did I say I'm from France? I'm from Marseille. There's a heat wave at the moment. It's uh, terrible. But um, yeah, very happy to be there. Great. Thanks so much. And we also have Eugene. Hi, Eugene. Tell us where you are and where you're from. Hey, everybody. Good to see everyone. I'm uh, Eugene Kim. I'm based in San Francisco, California. I'm a collaboration coach and trainer and designer. And... Uh, Probably my best known kind of contribution to the Wikimedia world was uh, leading the Wikimedia strategy process in 2009, 2010. I got to go, and I'm sure we'll talk, I'll talk about this in a second, but, but my entry point into the Wikimedia community was co-authoring a wiki in the early 2000s called Purple Wiki. And uh, that was sort of, that was how I got invited to Wikimania, and that's how I met all of you. And uh, it's just, it's fun to, to be here and see you all. That's great. Thanks so much. And, uh, and, and I forgot to mention that people don't know that we actually had a strategy <laughs> process before the one that we are familiar with now. And you were mm -hmm. definitely at the heart of all that. So that's great to hear. Um, and last but not least, we wanted to have both Delphine and Arne. How are you doing? Hi, right, good. Thank you. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Tell us where you are and uh, what yeah, where yeah, we are from, which is uh, different. Um, anyway, uh, I'm Arne. I'm from Frankfurt, uh, which also tells you a bit how I came involved with uh, Wikimania, because I was among those uh, who uh, wrote up the nomination uh, for uh, our application to host uh, Wikimania 2005 in Frankfurt. Uh, I was back then uh, one of the founders of Wikimedia in Germany. Uh, afterwards, I became its first employee uh, globally, I think, number eight. Uh, and uh, then I spent a couple of years on the board of trustees of the Wikimedia uh, Foundation. And currently, I'm sitting in southern France, uh, and Delphine will tell you why. Uh, so my name is Delphine uh, Menach. Uh, Not a fish is my nickname or my uh, username. Uh, and uh, we are now in France at my parents, because I'm French. 
Uh, and I joined Wikimedia in 2004, and uh, within 10 days of me being into uh, editing Wikipedia, Florence, who on my screen is like over there, um, <coughs> said, oh, you are an event organizer. We want to organize it in international conference. You're going to organize it. And that was it. And basically, I became the lead organizer for uh, Wikimania, uh, which wasn't Wikimania when we started organizing it uh, in 2005. And as you can imagine, because we were together in a room, um, it was the beginning of an interesting story, but we'll leave that for later. <laughs> Great. Oh, sorry, well, now the quickest I'm hire ever. And I work for the Wikimedia Foundation. <laughs> uh, and I am, I've just moved from grants to uh, uh, talent and culture or uh, HR department. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Well, Phoebe, tell us what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using a documentary as kind of the spine of our conversation, right? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, today, as a couple of you mentioned, this is this is Wikimania week. We were supposed to be in Bangkok. We are not because of COVID. But also this week is the anniversary of the first Wikimania. So um, Wikimania 2005 started on August 4th, I believe. And, you know, I wanted to think about this extraordinary conference that we all attended but also that served as this kind of inflection point. So um, we'll talk about this, but it was one of the first times that Wikimedians, many Wikimedians from all over the world had really met each other in person, had collaborated, we put names to faces. Um, I met all of you there. And so one of the things that we wanted to do is show a documentary that was made by a journalist named Rory O'Connor. Um, it's quite short. Uh, so we'll show clips of the documentary and then we'll pause as we go and ask some questions, um, you know, about our experiences then, but also our experiences now and whether Wikipedia and the Wikimedia world has lived up to this kind of excitement and um, newness that we all experienced in 2005. Um, so with that, uh, do you want to kick off the first clip? Uh, Andrew? Yeah, that sounds good. So you, so anyone who wants to find this documentary, you can look into the Wikimania article on at least English Wikipedia. I'm pretty sure it's included on many other uh, versions of the article. So the weird thing about this is it's actually a bunch of different versions cut together. So if you want to watch what we think is the, the, the director's cut or the final cut that is the best, you want to go about 25 minutes and 30 seconds in. So that's what we're going to do. It's about seven minutes. So and we're going to pause every once in a while. And Phoebe, make sure to you wave your hands or tell okay. me to stop if you if I overshoot anything. But I thought uh, we found some nice chapters here that we could talk about. And we want this to be a freewheeling conversation as we run into all these cool things we haven't maybe seen for 10 plus years. So this is the documentary uh, as it didn't really air anywhere, but as it was uploaded to Commons and spread around our community. So here we go. It's just good. Two more it's seconds. It's just rolling. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Last August, I flew to Frankfurt on Main, Germany for my first encounter with Wikimania. Here at a local youth hostel, hundreds of people from dozens of countries gathered for a week's worth of conferences, conversation, and conviviality, all united by one goal creating a free online encyclopedia in every language on earth. We could So we want to stop right there, Phoebe, right? Yeah, uh so um yeah, so we just wanted to show those first those first few seconds. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Those first few seconds of of the conference being in in Frankfurt, um, which leads us to our first question for all our participants. Um, what brought you to Wikimania? Why did you, <laughs> why did you turn up? Uh, Arna, you were there, you've already said. Um, so well, why did you even make Wikimania in the first place? Yeah, so the question for you is what prompted you to like want to have a conference in your backyard? <laughs> I think we were all so excited, uh, the, the German community, about meeting. Uh, as you might remember, I think the first regular meetings of Wikipedia started around 2003, uh, 2004 at the latest in, uh, in Germany, which 
uh, then led to the foundation of the very first uh, Wikimedia uh, chapter in summer in 2004 in uh, Berlin. Jimmy had around that time its, its very first uh, travel uh, to Europe. I think he stopped by with you, you James, in London before that, but then uh, on the day after he arrived in, in Frankfurt and then we drove to uh, Berlin to have uh, he attending the the very first uh, or the the foundation of the um, of the German chapter, and around that time we had hundred thousand uh, articles in the German language Wikipedia, which already sounded massive uh, back then. Uh, today it's just uh, sounds like a joke, uh, but we were so excited uh, and realized that meeting each other actually is so much improved our working together, our collaboration online in the weeks afterwards, uh, so that we wanted to see see more about that. So uh, that at least was for me the uh, the driving uh, thing behind spending time on the on the uh, application. But then everything around that time about Wikipedia was exciting, right? Uh, you all know that that was the feeling of doing something groundbreaking, not knowing where this is exactly going to lead, but leading somewhere. Uh, and that uh, gave me the uh, the drive to uh, spend probably too much time on it, but then it paid out <laughs> in, the, in the end anyways. Arne, I'm kind of surprised you, you keep saying application. This is the first time I ever heard that you actually had to apply. You, it was yeah. a formal yeah. process? Yeah, that was a contest like the, the Olympic uh, Games uh, where cities uh, oh. can up applications to become uh, the host of such an event uh, and there was a jury uh, I don't remember who was on it because maybe maybe Delphine can add uh, up to this um, uh, because she was whistling uh, behind the scenes to all the jury members uh, that Frankfurt was probably the best uh, application That's not <laughs> even back then <laughs> we didn't know each other back then <laughs> But yeah, we kept that. So we kept the idea of bidding like for the Olympics for Wikimania. Um, well, it's still it's still true, although we've made modifications over the over the years. Uh, but certainly for the first few years, we we had bids. And I remember that there were bids for that that first year, but it seemed like Frank. It was Rotterdam, like Bucharest, strongest. I think. Yeah. Okay. Rotterdam, Bucharest and Frankfurt. Okay. And I remember we had an IRC meeting where we, uh, the board was the jury, actually the board was the only jury that there was. And uh, the board was having a conversation with all the bidders, all the, like the lead organizers. And yes, I was in the background saying, ask them this question. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was a uh, professional event manager, which is the reason why Florence said, oh, now we need you to organize this. Uh, and then I would say, oh, we do need to take Frankfurt. <laughs> no, but it was, it was, okay, I, now I can it say it. <laughs> it was the best proposition. So what about, what about all the rest of you? What brought you to that first Wikimania? So I think everyone but Richard was there in 2005. So um, James, why don't we start with you? What, what brought you to Wikimania? And you're muted, yeah. So I, Anna said it right, we had had um, the first, I believe what we now call the first international wiki meetup in London in summer of 2004. And it had been really exciting to meet people from different backgrounds in person. And the idea of doing that at kind of global scale and just over in Frankfurt, you know, a really quick flight from London seemed amazing. And then a few months before it actually was going to happen, I think Jimmy said, oh great, you're going to Wikimania, you can help organize it. And um, I don't think he ever told Delphine that this was the plan. And so I rocked up in Wikimania 2005 and said, hi, I'm here to help organize it. And Delphine was like, what? I'm busy organizing a conference. I do not have time to meet new people, go away. So, so Delphine and I got off to a really great start, which has characterized our relationship ever since. But um, I was so very excited to meet everyone and, you know, to share my love of Wikipedia and, you know, what on earth other people did that mm. brought them to Wikipedia. Can, can I show you uh, real quickly the uh, the sign that is, um, well, actually, no, I'll show it to you later, but there is a sign that uh, 
Delphine hung in the end, which was hilarious, where it says, um, this room is intended for organizing. If you want to work on something else or want to talk about all the world and his brother, you might want to consider turning around and sitting down <laughs> elsewhere. Thanks a lot. So <laughs> I'll show you that picture later, Delphine. <laughs> That's a classic organizational <laughs> move at Wikimania. Yeah. So Ward, I know I know you spoke and were invited, but what 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 made you want to come to Wikimania? Well, you, you know, I uh, uh, knew about uh, Wikipedia from the beginning because people would tell me about it. They say, "Oh, well, these encyclopedia people are doing this," and and they got a better wiki than yours too. I was told, by the way, right away because it was. Uh, uh, Clifford Adams uh, version, I think they started with, and uh, I had my fingers on that. But uh, I was actually very flattered to be invited, and uh, it was, uh, you know, as as a wiki guy, I would of course go to all these different wikis, and there were a lot. And I would always just read recent changes, and by that time, it had become impossible. <laughs> you know, that 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 it had crossed this boundary. You know, and I always compare them to mine, and, and it, it exceeded mine, so so I was a little, you know, shy, but I was uh, I was glad to be invited and glad to be welcomed, too, you know, so that uh, that was important to me. We were so glad to have you. It was magical. Um, there's a good question from Megs in the chat. Was there, uh, who came up with the name Wikimania? And we were talking about this a minute ago. Does anyone remember <laughs> how that came to be? Um, I'm not, I wasn't there for any of those conversations. Yeah. I think we have been a brainstorming session. Maybe SJ remembers, but I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, SJ, SJ. I know it came very late. I only know it came very late because a lot of the signage says Wikimania uh, Wiki, Wikimedia conference. Mm. It was like the first international uh, Wikimedia conference. So it came quite late in the game, I think. And uh, uh, But I don't remember. I have to say it's an excellent decision. This was the best decision the Wikimedia movement ever made was to call the conference Wikimania. Well, ever <laughs> since we've been calling <laughs> ourselves <laughs> Wikimaniacs, which is pretty special. So. <laughs> um, so Eugene, I'm curious what brought you to Wikimania. And I will preface this by saying I remember meeting you so strongly at Wikimania 2005 because we we hung out. And I remember having this conversation about like, you know, here's this amazing world of people from all over the world and here we are and <laughs> what is happening at this conference. Um, but what brought you to Wikimania? Yeah, it's it's pretty incredible how strong my memories are. Like it's it's scary that it was 15 years ago, but as soon as you invited me to this, like I can I can remember us meeting Phoebe. I can remember James. James was the very first person I met. I don't know if you remember this, <laughs> James, but I could tell that story too. Um, I I ended up here um, in in Wikimedia because SJ invited me, and I think uh, in a lot of ways. Um, the what what SJ had decided to do was um, rather than just have this be about Wikimedia, um, he wanted to invite other people from the Wiki world as well. And none of us had ever met each other before. Um, and so like this was the first opportunity to meet. Um, Clifford Adams wasn't there, but Sunir was there, Sunir Shah of Meatball Wiki. Um, uh, there were Moin Moin, um, women guys, there were a bunch of just wiki people who gathered together for the first part. And so even though I uh, like was going on a track personally where uh, I was going like moving away from technology and into like the more human aspects of, of collaboration, part of my entry into this field had been like playing around with wikis and uh, and trying to trying to see what was happening. And so it was just like a really cool opportunity to to meet other people in the community. And then I met all these Wikimedians, which was amazing. So amazing, so amazing. What about what about you, um, Florence? And uh, I have we have a good story about how you and I met <laughs> at Wikimedia. <laughs> we can explain after. Yeah, I just I just wanted to um, comment further on what Arne was saying about the first German meeting in summer two o four. That was also the moment where we did the first general assembly for Wikimedia France. So I think Jimmy hoped from different places during that summer. And that was the first time he left the United States 
and he, he came to UK, he went to Paris, he went to Germany. And that's a few months after this meeting that we really decided we needed a meeting somehow all together to start building something, not having only meetings in Germany by German people and in UK with UK people and France in, with French people, but trying to do something more international. And also there was this very strong idea that we needed to have the allies with us, the friends and allies. So it's Ward, it's Sonir, it's Jean, and it's, uh, there was also Rich, Richard Solman was there. There were many people who were not Wikipedian, but that we, belong, we considered belong to the community at large. So we wanted them to be there. So one of the big challenge, and it was also, and uh, I'm sure um, Delphine will remember that, that was a challenge for the following years as well, was to try to find funding to make these people come and, and be with us. So because we wanted to be together with them. So the, um, that's my main memory of that. That was my second meeting with Wikipedians. The first was in Paris the summer uh, before. And I have this memory of entering the house of Jungen that was so amazing because I knew no faces. It's a bit different now because many of us have profiles on Facebook or Twitter or there are pictures of us. So even before we meet someone, very often we have an idea of what they look like. And for me, Wikimania in Germany was just discovering for the first time that somebody was a woman and I thought it was a man or maybe somebody was 70 years old and I thought he was 25. And on the, on the documentary, we see very well at the entrance, there is a very young boy at the desk. It was maybe 14 or 15. And I remember thinking, is just maybe the son of somebody helping to receive people. And someone told me, no, he's an admin on the German Wikipedia. And I was just, <laughs> what? <laughs> it, was, it was so, wow. And the Phoebe thing, well, Phoebe, tell me, what is your memory of that? Because I can tell you, there, was, there were rooms for us. We were all hosted together at the same place. So there was, we were having food there, the conference there, the coffee there, the beer. We'll talk about the beer later. And there was sleeping as well. And so what yeah. happened? What happened? Well, there was sleeping. And so it was this youth hostel building, right? And it was all on site. And I think this is, um, you know, one of the first and only Wikimanias where we have all been in the same building and that really made it magical too. But so I came to Wikimania, um, I came sort of accidentally, I will say. So it was on purpose. I, 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 I knew the conference was happening. I submitted a paper actually, which I gave. I was on the program. Andrew, in fact, moderated my paper session that I was in. I gave a paper with Kathy Ma. Um, which is amazing, or in the same session as Kathy Ma. But so I, you know, when I say accidentally, it's not that I hadn't planned to go, but the only reason I was able to go was because I was also in Europe anyway, at the time traveling um, after I had graduated um, my master's program. And, and so I had planned this trip to various parts of Europe and I planned to go to Germany and I thought, okay, I'm going to be in Germany anyway. I should go to this conference. I had been involved in Wikipedia for a couple of years at that point. So I get to the conference and I really, really do not know anyone at all. <laughs> at all. Like I didn't come with any connections. Um, but I did find myself sharing a room with Florence. <laughs> and um, I was so awkward and so nervous because I didn't know anyone at all. I think I asked you, where are you from? And you said, France. And I said, okay. And I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> Very scary. <laughs> Super scary. Um, but it was great. We got to know each other. And then in subsequent years, you know, we've seen each other, of course, every year since then. Almost. Basically every year. Yeah. And I think probably for the first year, because it was my first time really out of France, uh, my first time in Germany, for sure. But I was not too used to talking in English. Right. So it's right. it's very likely that I only could understand half of what you were saying. Very of course, probably. Of probably. Course. And I I was, you know, didn't realize that and oh so I didn't know anyone. But but Andrew, there's another part of this story, which is the reason <laughs> I was in that room in the first place. Yes. 
and in mm -hmm. fact, the funny thing is that before you were Florence's roommate, I was Florence's roommate, <laughs> but accidentally. So <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard this, uh, Delphine, but um, I'm not berating any of the organization staff, but I remember them giving my me my card to or card access. I think there were the Ving cards, right? The plastic cards. And I they said, oh, here's your room. I go up. I remember opening the door and there's this woman sleeping in the bed in this room <laughs> that I'm supposed to be staying in. And you're, you were Oops. sleeping, Florence. I think you're facing away from the door. Thank God, because I would have been really scary if I woken you up. <laughs> so I like very slowly closed I'm the door. Sleeping and... with a woman? <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm backed out of the room and I went back downstairs. And then I think there's a mistake. We need to change rooms. So then, Phoebe, you became her roommate. So actually, <laughs> technically, uh, uh, Florence was my first ever roommate at a international wiki conference so exactly yes. and you know and many times around every single year there are some room mix up and <laughs> changing every single one but it's yeah. it's kind of incredible florence because mm -hmm. we really we really did not know each other at all and mm -hmm. here we are 15 years later we know each mm -hmm. other i would say quite well you mm -hmm. know and um we've both been on the board of trustees you know we all we have this like huge history with wikimedia at this point mm -hmm. and it all sort of started at this conference so are, are, um, you say, are you saying that this room mixing up is part of the plan <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah kind yeah, of yeah, a yeah. hazing technique to get exactly. very carefully socially engineered yeah. following year we gave my room to john bart and another year i slept with delphine because of there was also a mix up well, every year there's a we managed that on purpose to get people to meet one another <laughs> It's, it's uh, mm -hmm. all of a scheme. This Creative chaos. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There you are. So before we move on to the next section of the documentary, just Brian, to you, um, you were already employed, right? You were the first employee um, at that time? Uh, yeah, I believe at that time uh, I was the only tech employee, but we already had a really solid mm -hmm. tech team that had started on a purely volunteer basis. And this includes a lot of the usual suspects who are still around today, like myself and Tim mm -hmm. Starling and Mark Bergsma. And uh, I think Domas Matuzas was a lot more active back in those days, uh, but he still pokes around online. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of good memories of those times <laughs> where, yep, there he is right there. A lot of good times uh, <laughs> where we were really dealing with the fact that our software had to deal with a scale of requests that was like 10 times greater than we could actually handle in hardware. So we were both trying to get more money for more hardware and we were trying to get uh, clever ways into our software we could where we could make it you know actually handle that. So being able to see my technical team in person and hang out with them and talk through some of our problems uh, with, that we were dealing with in person was like a huge accelerating thing for us. Uh, so like, it's, it's kind of like the back then version of the all staff meeting at, uh, you know, for Wikimedia foundation, it's just that the all staff was one guy and <laughs> yeah, three that's amazing. I mean, the so, photo uh, I think of, when times, I think of Wikimedia times. 2005 is, um, this like iconic picture of you and Domas and mark i think maybe um mm. sitting uh like on railings and one person's on the floor and you're all like head down in your laptop <laughs> building wherever building we could get wikimedia a wi-fi signal and building wikimedia media wiki as we as we speak um ah. um so sj yeah. uh uh you had some technical difficulties are joining us late do you want to do you want to quickly introduce yourself with who you are where you are um what your role is in wikimedia Ooh. Or Wikimania. Hello. Uh, hopefully, this will this connection will stay good for a little bit. Uh, I I remember all of the Wikimania planning uh, with with great warmth. I think I had just really been getting actively involved with with editing in the previous year, so. It was sort of my first year of, of really intent editing when the planning started. And that was also when Gmail was starting. So uh, I was I was looking back over my oldest emails on on Gmail and they are they're about Wikimania, more or less. 
so That's Lord, I, I found the, I found our first correspondence and an email to uh, Jimbo and Tim Shell, who wanted to yeah. do a three person interview with you. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. So you were you were involved in um, in um, part of the programming for Wikimedia, and then subsequently the the next year, um, you uh, bid for and ran Wikimedia in Cambridge, Massachusetts, with Delphine and James and myself. And I am wearing the shirt from that Wikimedia from two thousand six. So one Can thing you? leads to another here. So That's let's. Right. Let's move on. Uh, Andrew, should we share some more of the documentary? Yeah, let's get back to the um, docs. Next, and I next think, section. Yeah, I think we can all still see ourselves on there, except let me take off that ticker so I'm not obliterating SJ's face there. Well, maybe, um, Richard, you can take off the ticker while we start playing the video sure. again. Showing those excellent badges. Can we just give a moment? Badges. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, can we just respect the badge printer for a moment? <laughs> that was amazing <laughs> for first year. Yes, please. <laughs> so, there at registration. Also not just the printing of the badges, but the lamination yeah. of badges, for which I burnt my fingers <laughs> so badly because the laminator was an A3 laminator and the badges were A7 little bits of paper and they weren't actually designed to work like that. And so, you ended up having to push the lamination pocket onto the lamination strip, which was, you know, 100 Celsius of hot metal. And my fingers were not happy at the end of it. Yeah. Wow. Had that is a detail we did not know before. Thank you. <laughs> so let's take a look at the rest of the documentary here. Free online encyclopedia in every language on earth. Wikipedia.org, the website where this encyclopedia can be found, now ranks among the most visited and valuable in the world. It was created at virtually no cost by volunteers, these self-styled Wikipedians, using an innovative computer program called a wiki, which enables anyone to write and edit on a web page. I originally had the idea for uh, free. You want to talk a little bit about that, Phoebe, about the courtyard and all the hacking we did? Well, yeah, there'll be there'll be more shots of the courtyard later, mm -hmm. I think. So why don't we, why don't we go on past... Um, through the next little section, um, okay. through this interview and Jimmy, yeah. Okay, great. Free encyclopedia uh, two years prior to uh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia founder, Jimbo Whale. <laughs> I hired a PhD in philosophy who uh, helped me and we organized a very top-down uh, old-fashioned uh, project with a seven-stage review process for articles um, and this was really a dismal failure. Um, the main reason it was a failure I think is that it wasn't very much fun for contributors. All right the next part is Ward but we want to pause here a little bit right? Yeah, let's let's pause here. I mean, I think it's I think it's incredible. The new Pedia era did not last very long, but it sort of you know we talk about it a lot. How it didn't work to have this review process, but it did work to open it up. And um, and uh, you know, I think we'll we'll come back to this question, but just the promise of the writable web. Um, like one thing that is that is. Uh, just extraordinary to me. And you mentioned this a little bit, SJ, with your comment about Gmail. So many of the things we take for granted about writing uh, the writable web um, didn't exist in 2005. Uh, Facebook was not open to the public yet. It was only college students. So there was no Facebook. There was obviously no Instagram, no YouTube, none of this. But like, it, so this is this is an impromptu question, but like, what was your experience with the writable web? I know some of you were early in wikis, but what, you know, Brian, you'd been coding, I know, trying to make things better for Unicode and... Uh, well, I had never really seen anything quite like a wiki for a long time. The closest thing yeah, to it yeah. in terms of making a really cool hypertext thing was something more like um, Hypercard back in the day, which I know Ward was a big influence on you in the creation of Wiki. Um, 
But like that was something that was really missing from software for like a whole generation. You had this ability to read hypertext, but not to create it. And I felt like that was something that was really missing from the entire universe of the web until around the time when things like wikis came in and things that really uh, made it so that you could more accessibly create documents online. You know, I mean, things like Google Docs, you might think, oh, that's that's not the the right web, but you know, it people write documents that way. You know, it's a tool that people actually use to get stuff done, even if they end up copying and pasting it to another site. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that I felt was really missing from from the online world until mm -hmm. wikis really kind of came on and said, hey, you know what, let's just do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, like a lot of people, I, I had been, I had built some websites, you know, like nothing fancy, but I had built websites. I had run a couple websites. I knew HTML, but I had used FTP. And I tell this story about the first time that I ever made a Wikipedia edit. It just blew my mind that you could type in the box and hit save and it appeared right and game it changed. changer it was so <laughs> incredible so um it, yeah it, I, it, it blew my mind too because i remember it very <laughs> distinctly because i'd been doing the whole you know log in over here and type over here and save in the editor and then go over to someplace else now where was it supposed to be you know it was just it, was, it just felt it felt fast. It was fast. Mm -hmm. It felt it felt radical. It felt radical. And Eugene, I know you were involved in like hypertext communities and had worked with many of those pioneers. But still, it seems very new, right? You know, there's. Um, I think I think it was absolutely new, and I think in in a lot of ways, just thinking about where we are right now, I think it's still new. Um, I, I think you're totally right, Brian, when you talk about Google Docs and how, like, let's not get snobby about what the writable web means and what it looks like, right? But Google yep. Docs is essentially Microsoft Word Online, <laughs> and that was invented, you know, how Hypercard many years ago, Hypercard is just right? Excel. Um, <laughs> and, and, yeah, well, okay. Um, but I think I think what's what's interesting and I think what's subtle and, and it makes me really glad that Wikipedia is still what it is, is that if we look at like the ecosystem of the, the writable web right now, like Wikipedia is like other than the stuff that Ward is still doing, um, it's still like the, the purest sort of like essence of what uh, a wiki, to me at least, um, felt like back then. And I feel like a lot of those things that Ward was like super careful about designing and I think has been incredibly generous about like not holding on to too tightly and not saying, oh, this is how it has to be. Um, I, I think it's a little disappointing in some ways because I wish people like understood and recognized some of the value of, of just the brilliance of, of those early tools. Yeah, I agree. So maybe Andrew, we could show the next um, few minutes uh, or the, which has Ward. Yeah, yeah, let's go for the next section. But I wanted them to think deeply about what, what it meant to be a wiki. Not Ward not. Cunningham developed the first wiki or writable web page program a decade ago. Would it be uh, safe to say, fair to say, you're the father of the wiki? I'm certainly the father of the name. I uh, <laughs> uh, was borrowing heavily from all the uh, hypertext systems that uh, preceded it. Uh, but I think there was a promise for uh, the writable web uh, when the web was first conceived. The word wiki came from uh, uh, my brief experience with Hawaiian. The Hawaiian word for quick was uh, wiki. Uh, I learned the word at the Hawaiian uh, airport when they told me to catch the wiki wiki bus. I'm glad I chose that word because it's uh, it's managed to stick and, and uh, bring with it, uh, you know, a lot of... Uh, a lot of good vibes from a lot of people. We started using that, and then that was, a, you know, almost immediately a big success. So we had more work done in in two weeks than we've done in two years. But what? So, um, Brian, I had a question for Brian related to that. Brian, were you were you doing any of that kind of Newpedia, Wikipedia bridging at all, or were you mostly in Wikipedia? Uh, so I never got involved in Newpedia while it was running, mm -hmm. but I remember when it came on the scene. Uh, I was actually involved in learning the constructed language Esperanto back in those days, and it was just a fun hobby. And I remember seeing a mailing or uh, a uh, news group post about this online encyclopedia called Newpedia, mm -hmm. and I thought, 
oh, well, that might be neat in multiple languages and maybe even just in English or maybe whatever. And then I looked at the requirements for contributing and it's like, well, we'd like you to have multiple PhDs, but if you only have a master's degree, maybe you can be a reviewer. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, uh, no thanks. <laughs> so uh, a year or two later, you know, Wikipedia came along and uh, that was actually when I got involved when I heard that there were not only had the wiki version of the encyclopedia been much more successful, but it had already started expanding into multiple, multiple languages. And that's why it really needed the Unicode support. Uh, and that's how I got involved in through there. So right. yeah, it was, it was interesting days. Um, but yeah, the Newpedia project just never caught on in terms of the amount of throughput that it could produce. It produced, as I recall, something like six articles that that sounded about right. About so, so you know, I'm sure they were the very something. good articles, but right. <laughs> it ultimately simply was not successful because it couldn't scale. And we had something that socially scaled pretty well and technologically scaled. Eh, and then my job was to fix the scaling. So, <laughs> Ward, this is interesting comment related to what you're saying. Um, someone said the original web browser created CERN supported this read write function, right? But we all yeah. kind of know that it was seen as too complex and we kind of dropped that writable part for many, many years, right? From the, from the very beginning. Yeah. You know, that was, uh, you could get, or you could put and, and put was considered too dangerous. Nobody wanted to implement it because in fact, I was often asked, you know, if I'd ever thought of patenting it, I said, well, you know, they don't actually give you money when you get a patent, you actually have to sell stuff. And, and I thought, no way could I sell, a website that anybody in the world could write on. <laughs> what board of directors is going to, you know, pay for that? You know, so it, uh, so well, it'll be a calling card, and that it has been probably the best thing was uh, that the encyclopedia chose to keep the word wiki. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, and now it's become this term that people use sort of generically, like check wiki, you know, yeah. not knowing yeah. that there's this incredible ecosystem of wikis. That oh, yeah, there's so many people have no wiki. idea how much work yeah. goes into it. But the yeah. you know, Wikipedians know how much work goes into it. And, mm. you know, I was listening to Jimmy say, well, it succeeded because it was fun. And I've heard that said so many times. And I actually believe that there's an awful lot of different reasons why people uh, put in the time you know, become devoted to it. Uh, very rich uh, rationales, but it is true that in the end, it's fun. You know, mm -hmm. so, so to say that you know that that's the only reason, absolutely not. There's lots of reasons to uh, participate, but the but the original sure wasn't fun, Newpedia. So. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, we'll circle back. I think we should circle back later to this idea of the writable web and whether we've fulfilled our promise, the promise of the writable web, which I don't think we have. I think we are still pushing, you know, the boundaries. But speaking of fun, the next uh, little bit of this is um, about where like we were sure. in the courtyard. Yeah, in the in the hostel. So I always wondered who made that T-shirt. It's a weird design, kind of cool design. But uh, let's keep watching. What exactly is a wiki? It's a site where uh, anybody can add to or correct information they find there. That's done by adding a button to every page that says uh, edit this page. And uh, when you're done editing, you can press save and it's there. Somewhat unwittingly, Cunningham had created a fantastic social networking tool. But it took the vision of Wales and what rapidly turned into a global volunteer online army to take wikis to the next level. Offered the chance to create their own content and handed a tool that made doing so easy and fun, a community soon began to coalesce. Phoebe, you want to talk about that? I just want to take a moment here and let's talk about this courtyard. So there's lots of people that all of us recognize in these shots. You know, there's Ward and Eugene uh, right there at that long table. That table we spend a lot of time at. And um, let's just talk about the courtyard. Like, what was what were all of your experiences there? And I seem to remember some alcohol vending machines in the basement <laughs> of the hostel. <laughs> um, 
like we all just spend a lot of time just sitting there talking to people and you know Delphine did you did you know that was going to happen when you looked at the site did you expect that magic um so when I looked at the site the first thing we had to think about is internet which uh, there's a lot of sto stories about <laughs> and if my uh the correction is right. The courtyard was one of the places where internet that we put up, that we set up, actually kind of worked. So, so that was the reason uh, uh, for us kind of like invading the courtyard. The the whole of the um, uh, the youth hostel was basically for us. So uh, uh, we had all of it, and then we just kind of took all the tables outside. And I think this kind of happened organically rather than was planned. Um, and it's only because we had the whole of the youth hospital that we could do that as well. Yeah, that's that's the internet. <laughs> and, and I remember people just walking on the roof of the youth hospital trying to put uh, <clears throat> access points here and there. Um, and, and us going around with computers saying, okay, <clears throat> it works here, it doesn't work here, it works in this corner. If you're looking like this, if you are like up on your head, then it works. Um, but the courtyard was really like this place where everybody kind of started uh, going, uh, especially after lunch and everything. It was like at the level of the of the cafeteria, so it was really the place where people would go through to go everywhere else. We had when you see in the interview with Ward, you see in the background there is a little house, and that was the organizers' garden house, garden house, the garden house, garden house. Into, there was a small one and the bigger one, and 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 there was like a secret one and a very secret one. <laughs> But yeah, and so I don't know, like to me, I have to say that I didn't spend much time in the courtyard because I was actually working in the background and running around trying to fix things. Um, but to me, it's really this place where we just kind of gathered. I think we were lucky for the weather for the whole time. I don't think we had bad weather. Um, and that was very, uh, very good. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, that's that's the <laughs> that's the garden house, house exactly. So that's that's S -A and that's where we uh, are designed the badges yeah. and then we printed them and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I see S J and James uh, doing organizational stuff, and is that Jimmy uh, back there? Maybe a VIP. He got to be in the garden house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Um, what about anyone else? Where are your where are your memories of that courtyard of the of the? I think the site was really special. I actually, yeah. when I was looking for information about this uh, session, I was looking at the program and I realized that my I have basically no memory of the program itself, <laughs> except for Richard, because that was um, a sort of a wow moment for me. But this, except for Richard's speech, everything else I think was for me in the courtyard. I don't think I attended many speech. Um, I think I spent 90 90 percent of my time in the courtyard that was the place yeah and it was it was jimmy jimmy birthday so yeah we had uh, this sort of dessert and i did uh, some uh, artistic work with pasta <laughs> with alphabet soup right yeah, and, yeah it, it, i mean it was really a good job i was very proud of me <laughs> it was great it was very lovely. It was yeah. uh, it was an editing work. There were people trying to f to sort out the pasta, the right pasta from their plate, and handing them to me. That was a collaborative work. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the, the 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 only I think we were blessed with the weather really, and some of the Wikimanias we had later, we didn't have such an experience with a really nearby a uh, place to hang out and and. Um, Events and I, I think it really showed the way for the next one. And after that, it became one of the very important elements to figure out when we were looking at the beads. Uh, would it be a, a nice place to to hang out around together or not? And that that was one of the arguments why we would select some places rather than others. Yeah, I think I you're mean, right. That that set the tone so much for the entire. Mm -hmm search for the next venue, as you said, Florence, mm. that, that that was such a strong experience. And the hangout, the hangout part, I, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, SJ. I was just going to say, I think the hangout part was, you know, it's really profound that we did, that we did meet each other, um, like, and became friends there. SJ, go ahead. Having the radio crew show up and just park themselves in the courtyard was pretty, was pretty great. 
<laughs> I remember the the press team that year might be the best press team we've ever had. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. So one of the things we wanted to talk about was the world of Wikipedia, the projects in 2005. And I think this next little clip, um, if you've got it, Andrew, um, speaks mm -hmm. to some of that, some of the milieu of the projects that we all came from to come to this conference. The wiki is uh, uh, an, an empowering thing. Uh, it lets uh, people who might not otherwise have a voice have a voice. In rapid order, thousands, then tens of thousands, then literally hundreds of thousands of articles, photographs, illustrations, and maps were contributed, corrected, improved, and posted online. The English and German language Wikipedias took off first, followed by French, Italian, Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, Arab, Esperanto, and to the dismay of some, even Klingon. You know, I think, uh, you know, in the dot com era, um, the let's talk Klingon, right? <laughs> Yeah, let's talk Klingon. Uh, 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 Klingon. So I I have a pretty strong memory of this happening in real time, but uh, uh, Brian, I feel like you should tell the story of the Klingon Wikipedia. So there had been an ongoing conversation for several months at least uh, on whether or not we should delete the Klingon language version of Wikipedia. Now, there are sort of three basic reasons you might want to do such a thing. The first is that as a constructed language, perhaps it is not a real language. However, you have counterexamples such as Esperanto, which was mentioned in the video, which was in fact the language that I got into Wikipedia from. That's a real language spoken by real people, including native speakers, but Klingon has no native speakers. <laughs> Third, there is the possibility that there simply aren't enough speakers to make it interesting or to make it only a language preservation project. But if you take other languages that are, for instance, native languages with a small number of people who are actual speakers, should not they still also have the right to keep their wikis? So there was a long running sort of failure to reach consensus. But the primary overriding issue was that the Klingon language is copyrighted uh, by Paramount. So that's kind of a problem. So in the end, on stage at Wikimania 2005, Jimmy Wells says, we are deleting the Klingon Wikipedia. And I, on my little laptop, logged into the appropriate server and deleted the Klingon Wikipedia. We did, however, back up the entire Wikipedia and made it available on a Wikia site <laughs> under the same open source terms. So it has been preserved, and I believe it still exists in some form today. Uh, yes, and there are all kinds of interesting questions, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was. It's definitely still around on Wikia. But yes, I um, I remember mm. that decision being made, and I gotta say, I'm not sure we've ever made a project decision quite as quickly <laughs> before or since. I, on, so. on the other hand, it wasn't quick because it took a year to get yeah. to that point. But it took us a year to get to the point of letting the Queen of England, Jimmy Wales, who you know reigns but does not rule over the Wikimedia projects, <laughs> make the decision because no one else could make a decision. Uh, so that was actually a very interesting point. Oh, and uh, I, someone has noticed that uh, someone did attempt to raise their child as a bilingual Klingon speaker at one point. I do not know how it turned out, however. So that is it. I'm that sure they're a very productive member of society now. I seriously hope so. so do I remember that there was a lot of concern uh, that Wikipedia be taken seriously? Uh, you know, that's taken a long time to actually really be taken seriously. Oh yeah, but the, but the feeling was as long as Klingon is there, somebody's gonna find a. <laughs> I think that was an element as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is true. It is true. We wanted to be a serious encyclopedia. Um, the internet you know. is serious business. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to remember that was also 2005 where we had that first week of Mania. It was also the year of the Siegenthaler incident, right? Where we had the yeah. biography of living yeah. persons crisis. So yeah. you're absolutely right that that was kind of the pivotal year where it's like, we're getting a lot of attention. People are really reading us. We're suddenly in the top 100. Believe it or not, we broke into the top 100 sites in 2005. So we did have this kind of, we need to show we're legit. Whereas today, I think we're a little bit more freewheeling. Like, ah, we're clearly in the top 10. <laughs> yeah, it's time to bring back Lean On. <laughs> yeah, but we we definitely did uh, very seriously change our policies on uh, references and notability and biography of living persons. You know what you're allowed to say and not say, and imply and not imply. Uh, for all the good and ill, I hope it's mostly good. Uh, <laughs> but it it was one of those components where we're like we need to be serious and do serious things and make serious decisions. Do you feel that that it changed categorically with that extra attention to uh, referenceability? I think it definitely changed. Um, the experience of going in and making a random edit on English Wikipedia today is nothing like it was, you know, 18 years ago, and not even like it was 15 years ago. You could much more easily pop into something random that you knew something about and have a pretty good chance that you could add something and no one would tell you that you're a bad editor for failing to include a detailed reference. And nowadays, either they would just undo your edit or they would undo your edit and tell you you have to add a reference. Well, I don't I, know if I, that's I, an improvement in well, usability, we but it is an improvement in referenceability. So... We know that the the Newpedia to Wikipedia transition is often mentioned, but I think that 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 other mention, and I think the way it was there is the Nature article says, yeah, this is pretty good, and that came out in that same time frame. Yeah. And Jimmy on stage said, well, we are lucky they looked at the science articles because they're pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, this next bit of the documentary is about that. Actually, there was this real positioning at the time of Wikipedia as different from the rest of the internet. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and for, for years, we had this catchphrase, right? Like, Wikipedia makes the internet not suck. Um, <laughs> so uh, We're not choosing that one anymore. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, is that but, because we've given up believing that the rest of the internet doesn't suck? Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I know that most of the hoaxes that I inserted in the first years have been found and removed. Makes me very sad. Some of them survived many years. <laughs> and now I do not dare anymore inserting hoaxes in articles. <laughs> and last year, even someone asked me to please, next time I do a biography, could I do it in a draft format and get it reviewed by some people <laughs> before? And I was just... <laughs> Wait, so no. <laughs> yeah, Wikipedia grows up. It grows up. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we play this next little next little cut? I find this pretty funny, this next bit. Um, yeah, let's go and take a look at this. The internet started to seem like it was mostly about pop-up ads and porn spam and people you know, buying dog food on the internet, things like that. Um, and, now I think people are starting to realize, uh, yeah, no, it really is about a global uh, conversation and a global community. I think what's important is that people have experienced it. They know that it, uh, the net can be more than a, a shopping mall. It, it, it can be a, a place where they uh, they create as well as consume. The wiki way is to you leave everything open and you just say, hey, I trust you. And uh, that gives people the opportunity to do good. And it's a way of building trust among people. Wikipedia. That's a good pause point. Yeah, yeah. And it reminds me of something we've talked about, Andrew, which is like this idea of Wikimania building trust and, you know, trust in our community. So it's interesting. It's interesting to think about, think about how this first meetup did build a lot of trust among us. I mean, we met for one thing and we became friends, but we also sort of learned to trust each other in these ways. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Wikimania is not open to everyone not everyone can go in our community so yeah i'm wondering about like delphine you had some thoughts on that i mean one of the things that we are always struggling with is that wikimania is so powerful for folks who can make it but we all know that it's a fraction of a fraction of a percent of folks in our community who can actually make it but what are the roles of these uh face-to-face -face meetup and events in our community we do have regional now which makes it better 
But what do you see having been the creator of that first meetup to even in recent years being a facilitator of more of these kinds of conferences in our community? I think one of the things that I remember as being super important is people understanding how global we are as a movement. I think it's actually the beginning of the movement, if we if we can talk that way. I think it's really about thinking that uh, uh, people who might not uh, be editing Wikipedia but doing other things. Brian was talking about the tech team, which was completely volunteer, right? Uh, <clears throat> and a lot of people uh, intervening in the in the projects at different levels. Uh, for me personally, it was really about becoming a Wikimedian and really having this idea of like, I'm part of something bigger than just Wikipedia um, and, and seeing that very clearly. Uh, the face-to-face -face thing, as you say, I think it builds trust. I think it builds kind of what I would call a different perspective. It's basically, how do you talk to people that you, uh, Florence was saying very clearly, you know, some people are old or, or, or young when you thought they were young or old. Uh, some people are uh, this or that. And, uh, and a lot of that is true. Some people are really not very nice on Wiki. And then you talk to them and you're like, why this, was this really the same person or the other way around, right? And so I think that to me, there's a lot of, uh, of this that is super important because I think you can actually go your own wiki life without talking to anyone. Um, but the, the real life meeting actually brings this kind of humanity into this. Um, as a funny anecdote, uh, Florence called me not a fish until she actually met me at Wikimania, where she started calling me Delphine, right? And she went by Anter for a very, very long time until she uh, went to more of these meetings and what is much more in, in real life. And so there's a lot of, of these things that happen. And I think that we're always trying to find like a higher meaning for a meeting. I think that it's just like thought partnerships happen differently when you're together. Uh, uh, meeting other people that are not the usual suspects, uh, uh, even though there are a lot of the usual suspects. Proof is we know all of us have been to so many Wikimanias uh, and things like this. But I do think that face-to-face uh, -face meetings have a very, very strong value as a cement to understanding how far and wide we're actually reaching. And that uh, the little corner of our wiki, whatever that wiki is in the Wikimedia ecosystem, is just a little corner. I want to highlight another another aspect back to Phoebe's question about building trust uh, of the of the very first Wikimedia. Um, from my point of view, it also it was not just it has you had a huge impact within the community, but also way beyond because that was the very very first time that journalists actually could make a, an image of Wikipedians uh, behind the, the website. So far, they only showed the website. And that was the moment uh, where global media actually realized that there are actually people behind it. And uh, from that moment in time, many Wikipedians were more open to talk to the press than ever before, not just on the conference on site, but also afterwards. Um, we had less trouble in actually giving Wikipedia a face, and that helped a lot in building the trust that we have now uh, in being a reliable source, or not so reliable as we all know, but then that's the uh, <laughs> right. Thing. Ward, you want to say something? Oh, no, I was just agreeing, and, and, and the idea that, the, that there has to be imagery that is human to really tell a story and, and uh, to be able to tell a story. Yeah, that's, I mean, uh, I hadn't, I hadn't actually thought of that. So that's, uh, that's <laughs> every time, every time, word. every time I give a talk about Wikipedia, I show pictures from Wikimania. Um, you know, I like here's Wikipedia. You've all heard of the website, and then I show pictures of various people because, like, seeing the people behind the articles is incredible. It's an incredible way to visualize how the world works, how the web works, and how Wikipedia works. And um, it's hard to do unless you've met people. And I wanna, I wanna say here, it's it's not just Wikimania, right? Like, so James. Um, you were involved in this London meetup, which I think is still the longest running meetup of all time in our movement, <laughs> right? Um, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about that, but you had been meeting up locally in London for several months or years at that point, right? So no, actually, I was just reviewing the, the actual historiography of this uh -huh, for yep. this forecast, and it turns out that my causation is totally okay, the way around, okay. right? So there had been um, this wonderful uh, uh, regular meeting in Munich 
in German, but there hadn't been a regular meeting in English yet. And then following Wikimania 2005 and six and seven and eight, we started a regular monthly meeting in London in, I think, uh, 2008 sometime. And that became, because it's in the English language, it was the first regular meeting in the English language. And so because of English language privilege, that becomes the thing everyone references as the longest serving community meetup. And certainly running a monthly meetup, you know, every month, you know, come rain or shine is, is a big thing. Um, not because it's a lot of work, but because it, it talks about the community that you're building and the idea of permanence and people being welcome and not having to stress out about not making this particular one because there'll be another one in a month. Don't worry about it. And the yeah. community that we've built through Wikimania has reached out in loads of different places and it's really wonderful. As as Delphine said, essentially this is an empathy machine, right? It's how do you find people around the world, around your community, who you can work with and understand that they are human too and they, you know, probably don't deserve to be shouted at even if they are on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what? It is extraordinary. I think that the London meetup has continued, um, you know, regularly every month. I had run some meetups in Seattle um, by the time I went to Wikimania, in fact, where I was living at the time, but but it didn't continue. They were just sort of one off, one off meetups. But but I think it's worth noting there are conferences and meetings all over the world in the Wikimedia verse. Um, and what was special about this Wikimania is really getting to meet people across languages, across countries, all in one one place at the first time for the first time. Um, well, Andrew, should we show yeah, a? Keep going. Can I say how awesome it is that Ward is in the center square in our Tic Tac Toe? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, <laughs> completely appropriate there. So. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Wikipedians have also begun exploring other uses of the wiki. Need an online dictionary? Enter the Wiktionary. A better Bartlett's wiki quote. A repository of source text in any language. Wiki source, a citizen powered solution to the crisis in journalism. Bingo. Wiki news. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> All available via the nonprofit Wikimedia Foundation. Its mission to promote the creation of educational content and to make it available to the public free of charge. The more you give away, the more you get. I mean, that's, uh, we wouldn't have 1.4 million page views a month if we didn't give it all away. So um, it, it's, a, it's a very interesting phenomenon. 1.4 million page views a month. Brian, is how does that compare to today? Or James? It's more now. <laughs> Well, I have some I have oh. some statistics up on screen. So, oh, yeah. um, so the current uh, the current page views here, I think we're running around twenty one billion uh, a month globally. <laughs> um, yeah. The yeah. other thing the other thing I wanted to share um, is one thing I find incredible is how many articles we had um, at the time. So this is the main page from Internet Archive. This is the main page of the English Wikipedia um, as it appeared on the first day of Wikimania. And I'm trying to make it big enough to see, which I'm not sure it is, but there were 666,000 articles in English. Um, so it's literally increased by an order of magnitude, right? Since, since then in the last 15 years. Um, the other, the other uh, project that I looked at here was the German, the German Wikipedia, um, which was also, also, um, you know, still pretty new by comparison. So 268,000 articles in German um, on the first day of Wikimania. I will say the German Wikipedia, Wikipedia um, advertised Wikimania on the front page, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure any of the other languages did that, but that's just in, that's just incredible, right? Um, that we hadn't broken a million articles in any language yet, um, and now you know, kind of taking taking that for granted the the growth of growth of Wikipedia. Um, and Andrew, didn't you discover we had just broken the top 100 websites in general in terms of traffic in 2005? 
Yeah, if you look at the history of Wikipedia article, um, it said we just broke into the top 100 Alexa rank. So uh, one through 99, how much, what, what they've done since then, since 2005, how many of them are still, you know, in the top 100? But, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, a question that comes to my mind is, what was all of your experiences like telling normal people in the world that you worked on <laughs> Wikipedia? Did you tell anyone? And, you know, what did they say? I will start, yeah. you know, that yeah. more than yeah, once I've been, I've been in a bar and people over there, that guy, that guy, guy and, and someone will come up and says, can I do a selfie with you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wikipedia? And I don't explain it. Yeah, you know, oh, wiki, Wikipedia, it's all the same to me. So, yeah, I do selfies. But uh <laughs> that 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 took a long time and uh it was only with wiki that my neighbors had any clue what i did they said oh yeah the wiki guy you know and i know i do a lot of other computer stuff but the wiki guy so it's it's been good for me that's great what about anyone anyone well else? i mean one one quick anecdote is like one of the reasons I got into looking at Wikipedia was because it was related to my research on journalism. I remember when I first started editing in 2003 and start to write some academic writings in 2003, it was really hard to get anyone in academia to treat it seriously. Um, yeah. I'm not talking about like classroom teachers, but like when I was just proposing it as a, this is mm. the most interesting online collaborative thing that I've seen since like bulletin boards in the seventies and eighties, um, people are like, what, what, what? That's encyclopedia writing. That's not journalism, you know, because you had these tight little boxes where everything fit into. Uh, yeah. What's who studies encyclopedia writing with like English majors, maybe, or something like that, you know? So they understand that this is knowledge in the public interest being updated instantaneously by a global audience, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember uh -huh. talking to one of my fellow academics there when I put in proposals and they, they rejected every single funding proposal related to Wikipedia. And um, eventually I left academia in Asia. And I remember it was like five years later, five years later, like just after 2005, so it was like 2008, when finally you couldn't ignore Wikipedia. It's coming up all the time in Google. And they know that they, they saw that I was going to these conferences. And he, this academic who had been on this committee that rejected finally came up and goes, that Wikipedia thing that you were working on, that you it's really become a thing, hasn't it? I'm like, yeah, idiot. <laughs> five years too late. I could have used the fun. You know, but um, yeah, we were ahead of our time, you know, 2005 being in Frankfurt, um, we were on the cutting edge and uh, we can look back now nostalgically, but at the time we were kind of fighting a lot of inertia at that point. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, um, sorry, was someone else gonna speak? I, you were one of the first people teaching, uh, teaching with Wikipedia ever, right? One of the first, one of the first faculty, Andrew. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. It was because of the students who, of mine, like fifty to seventy, like fifty to seventy students in one shot, which at that time was huge, right? In two thousand three, having fifty students start editing the same day, you could kind of see the the blip in the radar on English Wikipedia because our recent changes didn't move that fast in two thousand three. You could still kind of read it going by your screen. Mm -hmm. So when they say all these students just pouring on there. They'd never seen that before. And it was because of that, and people were much nicer back then. So when they saw all my students making errors, they were trying to be helpful and pushing them and getting rid of copyright violations. And then they started this specific page, school and university project. So that was the beginning of academics and classroom teachers having a presence on Wikipedia and cataloging, okay, here's my student project. Please don't bite them. They're trying their hardest and here are their usernames. And uh, that was the start of it. When my class did that in, in one shot, we suddenly started tracking all these school projects. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I tell this story about how I was in grad school when I started, I had just gone into grad school when I started editing Wikipedia. And I was going into library school. I was learning how to be a librarian. And the first, one of my first classes, people asked us, or the professor asked us, what is your favorite reference work? And I said, Wikipedia. <laughs> and 
people didn't know what it was. And oh. I explained, <laughs> it was kind of incredible. And the history of this, of course, is that now libraries, librarians, you know, are very embedded in Wikipedia. There's been all these library Wikipedia projects, but seeing that develop from that point in time to, um, to today is is uh, it's been a trip for me. <laughs> it's been really really wild. Um, Should we see the last part? Yeah, of the, uh... let's 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 view the last last couple of things. All right. Love Jimmy's shirt. I have no idea what it is, but it, it's a nice shirt. <laughs> We're only now beginning to understand what the impact of the large scale wiki could be. And the wiki way continues its rapid spread around the globe. The latest next big thing in information technology. I think the Wikipedia is the most interesting thing I know of in all of information technology. Mitch Kapoor designed Lotus 123, which made PCs ubiquitous in the business world of the 1980s. So is this sort of the big bang of the next information revolution? Yeah, I actually think it is. This is the Big Bang because the economics, I mean, it's very interesting. I don't think even if you had a hundred million dollars or a billion dollars in five years, you could have paid people to create a Wikipedia. I think it is something which is just beyond money, uh, that the mode, you couldn't organize it, you couldn't hire them, you couldn't you know, you couldn't do it. And so when you have that kind of a radical shift in economics, you have to ask, well, where else is this going to happen? How far is it going to go? The wiki bang is so big, it even got my attention. Having gone to Frankfurt to make a documentary, I came back imbued with a new spirit of collaboration and instead began editing the world's first wiki mentory, a collaborative experiment in filmmaking that will play out online over the next several months. You do have to submerge your ego a little bit, so it is not for everyone. Andrew Lee is a researcher at the University of Hong Kong. No, Wikipedia is not for everyone. You have to believe in some kind of community spirit or the fact that you are building part of a greater whole and that you can actually hand off your work to someone who can run with that and make it better and better and better. And this is very different than someone who says, this is my newspaper column, this is my article, and my name is at the bottom of it, and no one should touch this. It's a very different concept. And why not? After all, it's a wiki, 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 wiki world. So there we go, everyone. <laughs> that's the that's the end of that. So, you know, whether whatever closing questions was just like, was Wikimania what you expected? What did you expect and was it what you expected <laughs> afterwards? It was, it was probably 10x what I expected. <laughs> I expected a lot. You know, the, the, uh, the universal enthusiasm was, was just hard to understand, you know, because at every other technical conference I'd been to, people are, you know, they're just sort of saying, Oh, I this is what I do, and you should pay attention to me or something, you know. But it, it was it was it was much different than that, and uh, uh, it's it's when I felt that I actually had a part in it. So so thank you again for that. Yeah, yeah, that's in, that's incredible. What about what about other people, James? Was it what you expected the conference? I mean. Yes and no. I was going there expecting to like meet interesting people and have my mind blown a bit and tick. I had my mind blown very much. I met <laughs> some incredible wonky people, a bunch of whom are in this call, a bunch of whom aren't in this call, and uh, it's pretty uh, bittersweet watching the uh, footage of people that uh, we miss, uh, either because they've moved on from the community or that they've died themselves. And uh, the friendships that I built through Wikimania, not just in 2005, but in all the others, have been incredibly precious to me. And not just in terms of, you know, having a friendly face on Facebook or whatever, but in terms of a shared purpose, an understanding with people from around the world that you're working together on something so much bigger than one person or even one country, right? And, and the idea that this isn't 
this isn't just a kind of weirdo thing, or rather it is a weirdo thing, but we're all weirdos <laughs> together. <laughs> and uh, how wonderful it is to have that kind of sense of identity and, and shared group dynamics. Uh, I, it was amazing. I loved it so much. I kept going back after all. <laughs> you did keep going back. You're one of the very <laughs> few people, uh, you and Andrew, are among the uh, extremely small group of people who have been to all the Wikimanias. Um, just kind of incredible. Eugene, what about you? Was it was it what you expected? Uh, what did you expect going in? It was absolutely not what I expected. <laughs> I mean, I think um, <laughs> in in a totally positive way. I mean, it's um, uh, just just building on what you said, James. It's just the power of the community. I mean, I've been um, to a lot of conferences in my day. And, and I feel like I, I belong to a lot of special communities. Like I, I go and I see folks and I, I have like real relationships with people I've met through conferences. So I don't have bad experiences by any means. Um, and yet like there's something unique about, about this community um, in particular, not just the Wikimedia community, but but the larger Wiki community that I feel like Wikimedia had a, a huge role in, in helping spark. And um, you know, it just it just strikes me like the feeling of coming on here and seeing all of you and I haven't seen many of you in a long time. And, you know, Phoebe, you might be the last person here I've seen like face to face. And that was probably a couple of years ago. Right. And uh, it still kind of feels like a family reunion coming here. And there's just a lot of fondness and good feelings. I'd say the one thing that maybe I wish for in terms of like the future of, of the projects is the the, the specialness of feeling um, like just being part of the community and, and feeling the relationships and all those things. Like, I hope that people recognize that. I think that's what makes Wiki, just all the Wikimedia projects work. Um, and uh, and I hope that like we can find ways to scale that, that experience of coming and participating in a project and being like, wow, there's some good people and I feel really included and this is really cool. Yeah, I, I certainly had the same the same experience all the way. I mean, the reason the reason I put so many hours in organizing events, I think probably the reason all of us here have put so many hours in organizing events is because it's just so incredible to feel included. And this is one way that you can get people included in our in our big tent. Um, all right, so can I, I ask you, how, how is it that you look younger in this picture <laughs> than you do now? I'm I mean, you look, I'm sorry, you look younger now than you do in this picture. I'm, I'm astonished and so impressed. Well, actually, we can show you why. <laughs> yes, yes, you have That's some special That's why you're older now. <laughs> yeah, you show your kids. Hi, this, this is your parents. This is your parents before they show got married. Show the kids. Right? We don't see the kids. Yeah. Yeah, you, um, you don't see the kids oh. there. Oh. <laughs> the so, so that was definitely not our expectation when we uh, <laughs> made our <laughs> This is one of the results of it. <laughs> so <laughs> just to be clear, you two met because of Wikimania, right? Yeah. yeah. And we pride ourselves. We want to say we pride ourselves yeah. mm -hmm. because we offline and not online. <laughs> <laughs> The story goes is when I uh, I started working with Florence and Elian, who was the uh, the press coordinator for for the for the for the conference, and uh, I said maybe we should actually go to Frankfurt to see what's going on there, and that's where I met Arne, and see, 15 years later. That's what it does. Yeah, and after we wrapped up the, the actual conference, uh, we uh, rented a van, drove to Paris, and packed her stuff. So that was the week after we came. <laughs> but Delphine, wasn't it true that you really didn't like Arnett the first time you met him? It's actually not true. I just thought I just <laughs> thought like we didn't like each other. I, I just thought, wow, he's really tall. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And then, no, the only thing that happened in the first three days, so this was like a scouting operation that we did in Frankfurt. So there was uh, Jens, there was uh, Matthias Schindler, Elian. there were like, Elian and all of these people. And we started talking about the conference and we were like, Arno and I were always kind of looking at each other it's like, they don't know what they're talking about. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like they knew the- On they, a professional they, level. On a professional, logistical <laughs> Uh, event management level, both of us were like very attuned uh, <clears throat> into yeah. this. But to answer your question, Phoebe, um, I've, I've said many times, uh, a conference is a conference is a conference is a conference. I still hold that for true. 
a conference is a conference is a conference is a conference. So uh, for me, as a professional event manager, it was just another conference. But as a person, yes, it was really the beginning of a, sorry. <laughs> and uh, and for me, it was apart from the very personal uh, turn that events took. I work for the Wikimedia Foundation today. I think I have devoted a really, really, really lot of time to Wikimedia. Um, so it was really something for me that. Uh, kind of crystallized the reason why I got involved into Wikimedia, which is the people. And uh, that's, that meeting the people was kind of the, the crown event of, of getting involved. Uh, I had been in it for, for the people from the very beginning, even, even the virtual ones, uh, but meeting them in the flesh was really like the, the most important thing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um, <laughs> you know, where do we go from here? I think that's a that's a question that's been <laughs> on my mind. I mean, not just in this chat. I feel like we could all stay up all night talking to each other and have many times stayed up all night talking to each other. Um, but I mean, we've been so Richard, you've been thinking thinking about the future going forward and we have this anniversary coming up. You know, we have Wikipedia 20. So the English Wikipedia was founded on January 15th, 2001. Um, and so next year in 2021, it'll be 20 years, right? And I think for all of us probably sitting here um, who have been involved in Wikipedia for some time, you know, that's like a huge chunk of our lives, our personal lives, our professional lives, but it's also this like world changing thing. And so as that anniversary draws near, I found myself thinking about you know, the past, the future, where do we go from here? So Richard, do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah, we're hoping to have a, a bit of a campaign over the next coming months on Wikipedia Weekly Network and perhaps on other platforms for the uh, Wiki20 countdown. And you can you can visit wiki20.org if you like. <laughs> uh, we'll have to have something interesting there at some point. Um, but the idea is we're going to have some uh, some Wikimania flashbacks uh, like today, talking about 20, 2005, 2006, maybe up to up to, uh, up to last year. And we'll also do some uh, some online events. Uh, probably two weeks from now, we'll have the Great American Wiknik, the Wiki Picnic. We'll have an online version uh, that we can share. Maybe we'll have a version of the North American Conference, maybe uh, the Wiki and Daba Conference, uh, some other regional conferences, and maybe we'll have a large uh, online conference in in, uh, in January to mark the 20th anniversary. And I hope uh, we can be a part of that. Yeah, so. Yeah, I guess related to that, does, does anyone here have any good ideas on what we can do? I mean, we're gonna be somewhat constrained because probably we will not be completely out of COVID mode by January 15th next year. But it, whether it's uh, Eugene, some experiences from other communities, or Arne or Delphine, what, what are some things that we could be doing to commemorate 20 years if we're kind of still mostly virtual? Like, what are some meaningful things we could try, you think? I want to ask Florence because uh, she's the one who's been here longer than I have. She has the full 20 years, right? <laughs> and Brian. Yeah. And Brian, too, right. yeah. I, I, have think a, I have a suggestion. Mm -hmm. As is, is part of the series that you're doing, I, I think that there is something that's really hard to understand unless you heard it, you know, in the first person. And that is how important all the little things that just got done are. And I think that people are, oh, yeah. Wikipedia has been around since I've been in school, you know, of course, it's just Wikipedia, then they have no appreciation for that. And some of it, it might have been easier early to do amazing things. But but uh, if if we could, if you guys could catalog and maybe get a little deeper profiles on some of these things that just come up, I remember this or the first time we did that or whatever. That, uh, that 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 story, you know, of where this stuff came from is is something that could disappear if you don't work really hard to keep it. 
That's a great point. I mean, I think folks know that we first came up with this idea when Phoebe and I were chatting because I wanted to download her memories of Wikimania because I think so much we always talk about, but no one's ever put them down. I think Delphine as well. So we, we started this as kind of an oral history of Wikimania and we just kind of ran with it and said, well, why don't we just do it for every single year <laughs> for every episode going forward? It's, it's a great idea. And thank you for pulling it together and, uh, and, and mine that content. <laughs> and I think, as, you know, on a serious note, this comes back to this question of have we fulfilled our promise? Has this, you know, we were so enthusiastic. You listen to that documentary and what strikes me is, you know, Rory is clearly so excited about talking about Wikipedia and Wikimania and meeting us and the whole thing. Right. And you know, we were too and are still, you know, Wikipedia still excites me, but, but there is this, you know, it's sort of settled in. Everyone, you know, knows what it is. Um, and the same is, you know, maybe true in for different parts of our community. So, you know, I don't, I don't have, I don't have any, you know, deep insights here, but I think it's something we keep pushing towards, you know, can we do more? How, how do we do more? Um, All right. I think one thing that's definitely interesting is to kind of look at, you know, all the ideas we had back then of what are things that we still need to do and kind of go back and see how many of those have mm. we actually gotten done? How many of them have we not gotten done? And why have we not gotten them done? Sometimes there might be a really good reason, like it turned out not to be a great idea. Otherwise, it might have just been really hard to do for community reasons or for technical reasons or for it needs more resources reasons. Uh, and I think it's really worth kind of revisiting those things come from, you know, 5, 10, 15 years back, uh, 20 years back, and really kind of looking, you know, did we accomplish those things? Do we want to do something instead of those things? If we do want to finish the things that we wanted to do 20 years ago, how would we actually get them done? And usually that means either people power or money power. And how do we make, you know, the two of those talk to each other? That's always the perennial question for any kind of, you know, majorly volunteer based nonprofit org like ours. One of the few things I, I would like to mention is um, there's a big difference between 205 Wikimania and the Wikimania we know now. And one of the big big thing is the number of people who attend that. And I, I'm not sure the people who attend Wikimania now uh, for the first time succeed to create so much big relationship with the people who attend than we did. Because, because we were not very numerous, we, we would turn, turn around this yard and meet people several times and have many opportunities to talk to them again. Whereas the latest Wikimania felt more like I have a chance to maybe talk to this person maybe for five minutes and then <laughs> they need to run around. So I think we really need to think about that over because one of the tendency we we thought over, over the years was to rather focus on regional meetings. So that's now the Wikimedia, the, the conference, the Francophone conference or Wikindaba for Africa, or of course the North American conferences. So we recreate small smaller groups, which is nice. But when we do that, we also recreate uh, boundaries. We put people in specific groups and we lose some of the the exchange, the sharing we could do with very, very different people. I'm not sure how to, we can solve that, but I definitely see that as a problem because for me, Wikimania is the highlight of the year. That's the moment where I see people again, where I get inspired, where I can hug people, not this year. That's a special moment and we need people to have more opportunities to do that, but not always with the same people. Right. Yeah, I was. I wanted to say that I hope that in ten years from now, when we do something like this for like the twenty years of uh, of Wikimedia, uh, this picture will look less North American, European, <laughs> and uh, uh, all yeah. the same people, but really have much more of the world. Uh, and that is something that we've been working on uh, quite a lot. Uh, a lot of us in our own little ways. And I really think this is the one thing that uh, I think actually that we didn't think about that, Brian. 
in 2005. I don't think we were talking about this. I don't think this was something that we even, I want to say cared about in that way, in the way we do now. And I think that's one of the greatest achievements um, of our, of our movement. Yeah. And while we haven't, we haven't done it uh, 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 yet, we're far from having done it, we have gone a, a, a big stride uh, towards it. Well, Plus, my, my, you, know, my, you, know, you know the program, you know the program back in 2005, my, that was the first presentation ever I gave about Wikimedia. And that was about having Wikipedia in the developing world. We used the term, term developing at that time. So that was okay. something that was already in my mind. That was the first time I was discussing it. It took me over 10 years to really be able to work on that. It took me time because at that time there was basically no one. I think there was someone from Mali who attended the first Wikimania, uh, Renault or someone. Yeah, but I, aside from this person, there was no one else. Um, it's the somewhere visa, in the, the program. Visa, I remember as I yeah. yeah, I remember us trying to work on the visa. It was really, really bad. I thank you but for uh, straightening me uh, up on that. It's super important to to think that this is really the thing that I hope for the future. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the program is up on, it's on Meta, and I um, am showing it on the screen, and it's, I know it's hard to read. And one thing that has struck me about the program is everything you know, everything new is old and everything old is new again. So there are some presentations here. Um, my friend Jakob Foss and other folks gave presentations about semantic data, interlinked data, metadata. And of course, we're talking about that all the time now with Wikidata, um, the new abstract Wikipedia. You know, you're here, Brian, embedding MediaWiki into applications. <laughs> uh, that's wild. Uh, Florence, your presentation about the developing world, but also uh, uh, Shal, our friend Michelle, um, talking about South Africa and access to learning materials. And these are all things that we um, are still talking are still about. Presenting about. <laughs> <laughs> still presenting about. still presenting about at Wikimania. And, you know, I... I you could get depressed about this, but I'm also, our focus is kind of incredible, you know, like our long-term focus on mm. solving these very hard problems. So maybe we can be optimistic that we're, we're still trying to make, you know, this, this, this encyclopedia community. Um, yeah. D Denny uh, Randichik recently, when he was talking about abstract Wikipedia, Reminded people he first talked about it at Wikimania 2005, if you can believe that. So, yeah, yeah. it goes all the yeah. way back there. I remember the presentation. It was wonderful. And yet I was like, there's no way we can get this into production. It just won't scale. <laughs> Freaking 15 <laughs> years later, I'm figuring out how to actually do it. Yeah. yeah. So Eugene, I'm seeing your presentation, a look at modern collaboration. Um, <laughs> you were back to back with Tim Starling, who if people don't know is one of the core, very earliest developers and the stool developer, how you can help out with MediaWiki. Um, it looks like Eugene, you and I were presenting opposite each other uh, in, in tracks. That's, uh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Um, yeah. yeah, we hung out. Uh, but but here's some library presentations, presentations from the yeah. German library. This is still, I, they, these folks are still very active. Um, so, yeah. yep. um, pretty incredible. Well, yeah. Well, thanks everyone for coming. This is great. And um, thank you for helping us kick off this series. We're going to try to do one episode per Wikimania. So, SJ, we expect you to help us out with 2006 since it was your brainchild to have it in Boston and Cambridge. And Phoebe was there, and most folks here were there. In S SJ lost his internet, which is why he hasn't uh, come back, but um, we'll get it fixed for 2006. <laughs> I'm like Wikimedia itself. Yeah. We'll hack it together. And, and you already have the t shirts. And I have. We have t shirts ready. And uh, yeah. we'll definitely, please let us know, anyone in the audience there, if you've got anecdotes about 2006, that was a pretty big jump in attendance, right, from Frankfurt to uh, yeah. Cambridge. And we had, you know, speakers like uh, from Internet Archive, like Brewster Kale, and it was pretty amazing there. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also will definitely tell the story about James's laptop. <laughs> so uh, that is, uh, <laughs> you forgot about your laptop, James. <laughs> so. I was like, 
is this going to be the story about Larry Lessig? No, it's going to be a story about RMS. No, it's going to be a story about Tim Lee. No, oh me. I, why? Oh, yeah, okay. That, that it was like a hundred, sure. well, hundred, like thirty, what, thirty-five degrees Celsius. So everyone was sweating to death, and uh, laptops were broken in the process. So, uh, <laughs> well, um, this is magical. Uh, it's so good to see all of you. Thank and, you, and thank you, Phoebe, for. Uh, putting this together and uh, Richard and Andrew for uh, making it happen. So uh, I'm, I'm so happy to have had the opportunity here to all of you. It was a great idea. Great idea. Yeah. yeah thanks thank everyone. Thank you. Stay Warren safe. Eugene, it's cool. a long time no see, so it was yeah. great to see you. Other Likewise. So good. So good to see the kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Stay here. Old. Okay, Take care thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Next Bye. Time, thank God. Bye. Subscribe and like this video if you're on YouTube, Facebook, or any other platform. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay.